Welcome. Thank you for joining us. I'm Rebecca Berger. This is Justice for All, where you get to hear from legal professionals in the surrounding area. We have a really great guest tonight, Lee Perlman, from the law offices of Lee M. Perlman. Lee, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Rebecca. It's a real treat to be here. I appreciate it. And thank you for joining us in this really crazy pandemic that we're all seem to be kind of yeah. mu mustering through. Absolutely. Everybody's doing the best they can. Sure are. So I wanted to kind of talk to you first. I mean, you, you handle a really interesting area of law, you know, bankruptcy, foreclosure, you know, restructuring of debt, which is really important in these times specifically. Correct? Yeah. Correct. Um, so I'm practicing on my own um, for about 26 years, helping people kind of find their way and uh, give them a second chance to restructure financially. Um, I think that um, everybody is entitled to an opportunity to, um, you know, start over and reinvent themselves. And so many of my clients have circumstances that are, you know, beyond their control, divorce, medical debt, loss of a job. And now everybody being impacted with COVID, um, obviously the pandemic is, um, is, is, a, is a, you know, an unfortunate but real example of circumstances that are literally beyond your financial control. I mean, that is really so true. I mean, did you always want to be an attorney? So I, I decided that I wanted to be an attorney in college, probably not, you know, an unusual time. There was a time in college when time. I thought I was going to be a professor, and then mm -hmm. I changed course. I went to school in Washington studied government and justice and ended up um, really starting to become interested in the law towards the end of my college career. Um, but I went out on my own uh, early on, um, not thinking that a big firm uh, environment was for me. And I started my practice um, really just on my own, doing uh, my own filings and handling my own cases. And my firm has grown. Uh, I have two associates and a team of about 10, so we're about 12, and we file uh, about 500 consumer cases a year in the wow. state of New Jersey, in addition to helping people with, you know, debt collection issues, abusive uh, debt collectors, um, mortgage, mortgage, uh, mortgage abuse, foreclosure issues, and really under the consumer and business uh, umbrella where people are impacted most. Well, I mean, what made you choose this area of law? I, I understand that, you know, you clerked for a judge for a little bit, and then you yeah. went out onto your own, and, and you've pretty much, you've been on your own since that time. What made you choose bankruptcy, you know, the, the debt restructuring? What made you choose that area of law? I, I like... What I, I like what I do every day and po po you know possibly it's a little selfish, but unlike some other areas of the law where people are focused on their cases and cases have a, their own natural life, someone comes to my firm and they have a wage garnishment, they have a bank levy, they have a sheriff's sale, I can get somebody some immediate relief. I have clients that come to me, um, you know, I had a client about two or three weeks ago um, a mom who had their kids in the car and there were debt collectors that were coming through the Bluetooth when she was on the way, you know, pre-COVID, oh. taking the kids to soccer practice. Wow. And everybody, everybody is, is, is you know, they're, they're shook up. Mm -hmm. they're, they're confused. Kids don't know what's going on. I can file a bankruptcy and make sure that somebody can have, you know, an uninterrupted dinner. Debt collectors don't have to call, stop a sheriff's sale, stop a wage burn. It's, it's a pretty powerful tool that gives people you know breathing room and a fresh start and i like that about about what i do i you know if you get your case together in an organized fashion you can reduce someone's stress and get them a result very quickly so for me that that part of what i do is very satisfying mm -hmm. well and i think it's so important i really like the concept of you saying you know, I really want these people to have a fresh start. And I think that's incredibly important, particularly with what we're going through right now. What is your experience? What are you seeing right now with this pandemic? I can't imagine that, you know, people are not considering, if not already filing bankruptcy petitions. So people are giving thought to, to, to really what's happening. 
There's a lot now as we sit here today, I think there's a tremendous amount of uncertainty with people's mm -hmm. budgets, with whether they're going to be furloughed, whether they're going to be laid off or, you know, potentially and regrettably fired and not able to come back to work. So there's a lot of uncertainty about whether they're going to be able to get involved in a repayment plan, whether they have to get involved in a bankruptcy that's going to provide for a liquidation. So we're trying to assess and make the right decisions for people to decide when it's most appropriate uh, to file. But I have clients now, I mean, we're in this pandemic a couple months now, right, Rebecca? So mm -hmm. people are in situations where their credit card payments are coming due. Mm -hmm. uh, some credit card companies are being proactive and working with people so they don't have to necessarily pay the minimum monthly payments as they ordinarily are used to. Um, and then we can talk a little bit more later about, you know, some of the some of the strategies to use uh, with mortgage companies, mm -hmm. but you need to be proactive with your mortgage company and seeking uh, a forbearance where they're going to, you know, put some of that, mm -hmm. put some of those those payments, uh, suspend those payments, a temporary suspension, or where you want a deferral, where you're looking to have some of those payments at the back end of the loan. But um, you know, dealing with creditors like this, both mortgage company creditors and credit card. Uh, uh, situation when you're home and you're in a two-parent household or a one-parent household and you're trying to work and homeschool your e-school e-learn um, it's a lot of stress it's you know the the financial stress is difficult to deal with but when you're dealing with having so many different um, so many different um, um, stressors it's hard for it's hard for my clients and your clients too I'm sure Definitely. I think it's definitely a difficult time because there's a lot of uncertainty right now, which I think is really affecting people. And one of the things that you've actually testified in regarding legislature for abusive debt practices, explain what that is. Yeah, so there's something called the, um, the that we deal with pretty regularly in our practice called the Fair Debt and Collection Practices Act. So that's a federal law that was passed in the 70s that governs how debt collectors are supposed to conduct themselves when they're looking as a creditor to collect the debt. So that applies to what we call um, third party or second party debt collectors. So for instance, if Discover is contacting you because you're late on your credit card, that wouldn't fall under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act because they're an original creditor. Mm -hmm. But, for instance, if Discover sends that out to a debt to a collection agency, you know, ABC Collection or, you know, the, the law offices of uh, William Smith to collect, then they have to follow certain rules and regulations. For instance, they can't call you after 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. They can't use abusive language when they look to speak to you on the phone. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, if they're communicating with you by telephone, or by letter, you have an opportunity to write to them and ask for validation. Maybe the amount they're asking for is incorrect. Mm -hmm. Maybe the debt is beyond the statute of limitations, meaning it's 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 too it's too late for them to sue. Or maybe they sued you in the wrong jurisdiction. Maybe they should have sued you mm -hmm. when you lived in Maryland and now you live in New Jersey. So you have an opportunity under the Fair Debt and Collection Practices Act to ask for that debt. To be validated it's very powerful and if the collector fails to validate the debt in accordance with the statute you may have the ability to go ahead and have that debt um, um, uh, extinguished or um, zeroed out so they can't you know so potentially with prejudice meaning they can't come after you ever again and I think that that's actually really important, you know, again, tying it back to where we are at right now. I mean, that legislation is really important and that act is really important to what's going on and, you know, how these debt collectors and, and you know, granted, there's people do incur debts, but life circumstances occur as well that sometimes people are just simply not in control of. And you right. I imagine you see that a lot. Yeah, I mean, right now, um, you know, the government passed the CARES Act at the end of March, and that there's some specific provisions in that act with how uh, mortgage companies and debt collectors are supposed to conduct themselves now. To the extent possible, mortgage companies need to be offering forbearances to homeowners relative to their mortgage if they have what's called a FHA or a Freddie Mac mortgage, which is about 
you know, three quarters of the mortgages in the United States. Mm -hmm. And you can find out if you have a federally backed mortgage by going on the Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac website. Mm -hmm. But assuming that you have a federally backed mortgage, um, the mortgage company is required to offer you a forbearance, which is a suspension of payments. And that can be negotiated, but you need to be in touch with your lender to find out what that means. Does that mean they're going to put those payments on the back end of the loan because you've been impacted by COVID-19? And by the way, you have to demonstrate that your hardship is related to COVID-19. Or are they gonna say at the end of three months, all right, Mr. Smith, uh, you haven't paid your mortgage in three months, now we want three months of payment. So you, you need to be able to talk to the mortgage company and get that, uh, that pause or that forbearance in writing and understand what that means and make sure too that you're not signing away any future rights. For instance, the ability later on to modify your mortgage. Mm -hmm. And a mortgage modification might mean they're gonna change your interest rate, lower your principal, or go ahead and take payments and spread them out over the back end. But mm -hmm. you need to you need to see whatever whatever mortgage company uh, you use and whatever relief you're being offered, it must be in writing and it has to be memorialized and you probably should have a lawyer take a look at it just to make sure because it's going to be a significant change in your relationship with your mortgage company. And I think that th you actually bring up a really good point there that I don't think people necessarily think about this. Maybe they speak to either a debt collector, let's say a, a credit card company or you know a mortgage lender, a mortgage company and they're speaking to them over the phone and don't necessarily realize you need to have that in writing because you don't know what's going to happen in the future and really you want to understand the terms. You absolutely do. And, and, I, and I think you make an excellent point. And I try and tell my clients, you know, you're going to you're going to wait on hold for a long time to speak to the mortgage company if you're going to request the forbearance. So be prepared. Have your information available. Be prepared to tell the mortgage company how and in what way you've been impacted specifically. Are you furloughed? Are you laid off? Mm -hmm. Have you lost your job? When will you return to work? And what capacity will you return to work? Has your employer told you you're going to return to work at a reduced rate? Because these, this is the information the mortgage company is going to ask you, and you have to be prepared to be able to answer those questions so that you can get the best forbearance possible, which again is a temporary suspension of your payments, or whether you're gonna get a deferral, which in some cases is better, because a deferral means after three months you don't have to make those payments, they're gonna potentially put them on the back end of the loan. So you have to know what you're asking for and what you're requesting, it's very, it's, it's significant and it makes a difference. Well, and I really want to get into, you had mentioned that, you know, the amount of, like, some of this stuff and, and the relief you may be asking for, you're required to have proofs. And I think that that's a really important topic. And I really want to come, after we come back from the commercial break, I kind of want to delve in that a little bit further so we can kind of talk about that. And what is it that, you know, individuals can expect that they need to provide? This is sure. Justice for All, and uh, we'll see you after these com this commercial break. The usual? Of course. Number one. Jersey Mike's. A sub above. Today's show is sponsored by Dr. Jacqueline. Take charge of your life personally, financially, and professionally. Visit drjacqueline.com to book an appointment today. 
Hey everybody, my name is Ralph Graves Jr. I'm the host of the Ralph Graves Jr. Show, and I want to invite you to pick up my book, Unstoppable. I wrote a book called Unstoppable. It's, it's seven universal laws that will transform how you pursue and achieve success. The one thing that my 20 years of law enforcement has taught me is that no matter who you are, we are all governed by universal laws, like gravity. But in this book, we're gonna talk about laws like the law of forgiveness, laws like the law of control, the law of intelligent practice, the law of expectancy. I was able to see how those, no matter what their background was, those who, who identified and, and treated these laws with respect, they were able to go on and lead successful lives. So pick up this book, and you can go ahead and pick it up at amazon.com, barnesandnoble.com, ralphgravesjr.com, where, um, anywhere where fine books are sold. Thank you. There you go, Richard. Oh! Is that too hard for you? No. Is it too hard for you? Woo! We're playing catch now. <clears throat> oh, shit. What do I want to be when I grow up? Maybe a musician? A veterinarian? Maybe an equestrian? Mommy? Well, why not be all these things and more? Consider joining me, Dr. V, with friends and colleagues as we explore a wide range of topics together. V is for variety here on RVN TV. Wait, wait, uh, 13, giant. The usual? Of course, number one. Jersey Mike's, a sub above. for all and I'm Rebecca Berger we have a really great guest today Lee Perlman and prior to our commercial break we were talking about the current crisis and some of the debt issues people are having we were also talking about right before break and what we wanted to, I wanted to really kind of ask you about is prior to the break you had said that people are going to need proof in order to maybe get a break on their credit card or on these mortgage, you know, whether it be, you know, a forbearance or whatever the mortgage company works out with that individual, what kind of proof are they going to need? Yeah, so I, I think it's going to be important if you've been impacted as a result of COVID-19 financially and if the impact, uh, you're making a request to have a pause of your credit card payments or you're looking to request uh, a temporary forbearance, or like we talked about earlier, or potentially you're looking for a deferral, I think you're going to look to have something ready from your employer from their end that's mm -hmm. going to show that the employer's taken action against the employee to either, to either consider a furlough, a layoff, or God forbid a termination. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that paperwork from the employer should be specific to the COVID-19 crisis. And if it's not, I'm concerned that the mortgage company or the credit card company say, you know what, this doesn't fall under the CARES Act or we don't have to necessarily, uh, we're not obligated to recognize a pause in your credit card payments or your mm -hmm. forbearance or even a deferral because you haven't sufficiently demonstrated to me, borrower, a card holder, that, um, that it, it's, rela it's related to COVID-19. So have you seen that debtors in, in this particular time and mortgage companies are really, really willing to work with people? Have you, have you had calls where this they is not are. the case? They are. I mean, it depends on the, it's a good question, Rebecca. It depends on the lender, mm -hmm. but I think that um, you need to be proactive. 
So if you're if you're recognizing that you're ha you have a problem with your budget, mm -hmm. you've been impacted because you have a reduction in income. You don't have sufficient savings to be able to make minimum monthly payments on credit cards. You're concerned that 30 days from now you're going to fall behind on your mortgage. Mm -hmm. You have to then decide you've got to get on the phone with your mortgage company, your credit cards to start negotiating before it becomes a situation where you're late. Because the last thing you want to happen is your credit report to be impacted. So if your credit report is impacted, the three billion dollar credit bureaus that have a monopoly in this country on your credit report are TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax. And if they start to report you as 30 or 60 days late because you didn't get out in front of this, that's going to affect you later on. Listen, a 30, 60 day late can be a drop in your credit score between 50 and 150 uh, points. That can be the difference, Rebecca, between mm -hmm. a $350 car payment and a $550 wow. car payment. Mm -hmm. So there's a formula that I, I, I'm not I'm not familiar enough tonight to talk about. We could talk about it in greater depth, but there are there are specific mathematical relationships mm -hmm. between the drop in your credit score and the impact on a car or a mortgage monthly payment and your interest rate. So one yeah. of the things that's happening right now in the mortgage industry is that the mortgage companies specifically are looking for people with higher credit scores to um, secure a mortgage. And this happened within the last 30 days. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so much, as you know, that's mm -hmm. happening on a daily basis relative to the financial uh, the, the financial markets and the foreclosure uh, and, uh, situations that it's really hard to keep up even as a lawyer. But I can tell you specifically, and I do know it's, it, it is true, that mortgage companies are looking for uh, borrowers who have higher credit scores to secure traditional 30-year mortgages. So when we get out of this, God, you know, God help us all when we get out of this and, we can, and, they, and the lights are turned back on, you want to know that you protected your credit report and you've been proactive in contacting your mortgage company, your credit card companies, so that you're not impacted later on because you'll be kicking your stuff you did so you know it actually there's two things I want to cover you know even now it seems I was actually talking to an appraiser recently who told me they are praising houses like crazy because people are refinancing right now and right. taking advantage of the lower rates yes rates are rates from what I understand are low but um, on, on that end, I mean, there's there's probably opportunity. But on the on the, on the credit card side, the 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 um, the data with respect to the number of people who are going to start to default and can't make minimum monthly payments. I mean, prior to the COVID problem, the increase in credit card debt over the last ten years. I mean, it it it, it was it's catastrophic. So mm -hmm. there are going to be a number of people who are going to have difficulty making those minimum monthly payments. And before we were talking about requests to the mortgage companies, I think the statistic was right through the end of March, which is not even a, you know, that's a 30 day benchmark. I think requests to the mortgage companies for forbearances mm -hmm. and um, deferrals was up 1900% through wow. the end of March. 1900%. Wow. wow. So now if people are able to get you know a break so to speak yeah. on their on their payments for their credit cards or their mortgage is there going to be a problem with the reporting bureaus i mean is it going to affect so, their credit scores yeah so so that's that's a great question and it's kind of an unknown i don't think i've read the cares act which is the act that the president trump passed at the end of march that act provides for specifically like we talked about uh, forbearance for FHA mortgages. There's a temporary pause on sheriff sales and foreclosures through the end of May, mm -hmm. um, but it does not address at all and is silent with respect to how and in what way the credit bureaus, TransUnion, Experian, Equifax are um, correspondingly supposed to report those temporary suspensions or pauses of both the mortgage company uh, the mortgage company payments and the credit card. So that's that's an excellent question. I don't know, and I'm and I'm sure that's going to be a source, like so many things, of uh, you know, COVID-related litigation later on. You know, regrettably. Mm -hmm. 
And and you can see how that would happen because as you said, you know, one you know, one drop in your credit your credit score can certainly affect your payments and then that also leads to people not being able to pay things and then potentially event eventually leading to a potentially a bankruptcy. Yeah. I mean there's a lot of there's a lot of myths out there with respect to, you know, to bankruptcy that, you know, somehow your credit is going to be forever impacted, but mm -hmm. most of the people that I see, you know, and I began my conversation with you by saying that most of the people who have to file bankruptcy, there, there's a triggering event. Mm -hmm. You know, the event is, is is a divorce. It's lack of medical insurance. It's mm -hmm. loss of a job. It's COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. It's it, but 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 there's an event that leads them to have to file. And mainly, the clients that I see, ninety percent of them fall in that category. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we see clients who uh, overspend and charge up their credit cards and have to file, but. In doing this since 1994, that's a minority. Mm -hmm. It's a fallacy and a misnomer that people run out to get plastic surgery and go on cruises <laughs> and buy luxurious items yeah. and then run to the bankruptcy lawyer to file. That's mm -hmm. wrong. I mean, th those kinds of people are barred from filing and there are provisions that are written into the code to prohibit that kind of conduct. Mm -hmm. So most of the people that we see um, fall into the prior categories and need relief and people need relief now and in terms of the credit score in a in a typical bankruptcy circumstance someone has a fair amount of debt relative to their income that's the debt to income ratio mm -hmm. if a, a, typically after the bankruptcy is over ordinarily you'll see someone's credit score increase 50 to 150 points post discharge in my firm, we aim to bring people's credit score in the 700 range post discharge, and in, in most cases, people are in a better position after they file bankruptcy because they don't have all that debt. They're not able. People say to me, "Oh, if I file bankruptcy, my credit is somehow going to be impacted. I'll never get credit." Then we can't get credit now. So if you file up, <laughs> you your, your debt to income ratio is high. So mostly today everything is about the credit score mm -hmm. and it is true that a bankruptcy will be on your credit report but correspondingly you will be in a situation where your debt to income ratio will be better in line and if we work to bring your credit score up post discharge which is what my firm tries to do we try and you know be we have a comprehensive approach to help the clients post discharge many times you know they're in a they're in a better position so it really is a myth that you're going to lose everything that bank sees a person failing, that you're not going to get credit again. Those are things that the credit card companies um, and creditors would have you believe, but they're really not true. Well, and I think that it's really important that you've dispelled those myths that people are just randomly filing bankruptcies and they're just running out and filing bankruptcies. And, you know, I'll never have a good credit score again because there is such a fear of it. But sometimes you have these triggering events which really are necessary this is a necessary process and i think it's amazing that your firm also works after the bankruptcy to really try to help that person work on a plan to raising that score which is ultimately going to help them in the end financially it's 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 really it's it, it's fundamentally important to be able to focus on that and get somebody in a better position i mean one of the first things or second things people ask me is the impact on the credit and we try and educate them to let them know to let them know that mm -hmm. yeah to let them know that so if someone wanted to reach you to uh, retain your services and consult with you how would they get in touch with you um, so yeah I'm easy to reach I'm New Jersey bankruptcy.com so that's all spelled out mm -hmm. New Jersey bankruptcy.com and my we have offices in my main office is in Cherry Hill, but we're Cherry Hill, Mount Holly, and Tom's River. And we can be reached at 856 751 4224. Lee, I want to thank you for being here. You gave such amazing information that I think everyone can use, particularly during this time. And, and you provide such an amazing service for people. So thank you for being here.
Oh, you're very kind. It's oh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, and you're you're a great colleague and a wonderful resource. Thank you so Same. much for having me. Same here. This is Justice for All. I'm Rebecca Berger, and I'll see you next week. Today's show is sponsored by Dr. Jacqueline. Take charge of your life personally, financially, and professionally. Visit drjacqueline.com to book an appointment today. Hey everybody, my name is Ralph Graves Jr. I'm the host of the Ralph Graves Jr. Show, and I want to invite you to pick up my book, Unstoppable. I wrote a book called Unstoppable. It's, it's seven universal laws that will transform how you pursue and achieve success. The one thing that my 20 years of law enforcement has taught me is that no matter who you are, we are all governed by universal laws, like gravity. But in this book, we're going to talk about laws like the law of forgiveness, laws like the law of control, the law of intelligent practice, the law of expectancy. I was able to see how those, no matter what their background was, those who, who identified and, and treated these laws with respect, they were able to go on and lead successful lives. So pick up this book and you can go ahead and pick it up at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, RalphGravesJr.com, where, um, anywhere where fine books are sold. Thank you. There you go, Richard. Oh, is that too hard for you? No, it's too hard for you. Woo, we're playing catch now. <laughs> oh, shit. What do I want to be when I grow up? Maybe a musician? A veterinarian? Maybe an equestrian? Mommy? Well, why not be all these things and more? Consider joining me, Dr. V, with friends and colleagues as we explore a wide range of topics together. V is for variety here on RVN TV. Wait, 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 uh, 13, giant. The usual? Of course. Number one. Jersey Mike's, a sub above. Today's show is sponsored by Dr. Jacqueline. Take charge of your life personally, financially, and professionally. Visit drjacqueline.com to book an appointment today. Hey everybody, my name is Ralph Graves Jr. I'm the host of the Ralph Graves Jr. Show, and I want to invite you to pick up my book, Unstoppable. I wrote a book called Unstoppable. It's, it's seven universal laws that will transform how you pursue and achieve success. The one thing that my 20 years of law enforcement has taught me is that no matter who you are, we are all governed by universal laws, like gravity. 
But in this book, we're going to talk about laws like the law of forgiveness, laws like the law of control, the law of intelligent practice, the law of expectancy. I was able to see how those, no matter what their background was, those who, who identified and, and treated these laws with respect, they were able to go on and lead successful lives. So pick up this book and you can go ahead and pick it up at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, RalphGravesJr.com, where, um, anywhere where fine books are sold. Thank you. There you go, Richard. Oh, is that too hard for you? No. Is it too hard for you? Woo, we're playing catch now. <laughs> oh, shit. What do I want to be when I grow up? Maybe a musician? A veterinarian? Maybe an equestrian? mommy? Well, why not be all these things and more?